This is Plant-Based Briefing. What is gelatin and why isn't it vegan? Explanation and Alternatives by Michael O'Fay at TheMinimalistVegan.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host, and this is the curated content plant-based podcast where I narrate a variety of articles with permission on plant-based and vegan topics. And if you want to support the podcast, you can do so in a few ways. You can share it with others. You can give a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Amazon. And you can shop for merchandise at plantbasedbriefing.com. Today's post is by Michael O'Fay from The Minimalist Vegan. He and his wife, Marsha, are best-selling authors, bloggers, YouTubers, and podcasters, exploring what it means to live with incredible intentionality as minimalists and vegans. They create a ton of amazing content. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. What is gelatin and why isn't it vegan? Explanation and Alternatives by Michael O'Fay at TheMinimalistVegan.com Is gelatin vegan? Gelatin is a protein made from the collagen inside animals' skin and bones. It's considered a co-product of the meat industry and therefore isn't vegan or even vegetarian for that matter. That's the quick answer. But if you want to know precisely how gelatin is made, the products that commonly use gelatin, the size of the industry, and vegan-friendly alternatives, then read on to learn more. What is gelatin? Gelatin is a colorless, odorless, and nearly tasteless protein made from animals' bones, skin, and connective tissues. It's used as a thickening agent in food and a stabilizer in pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. Specifically, you'll find gelatin in products like gummy bears, chocolate, jello, gravy, ice cream, dairy products like yogurt and cheese, coffee creamers, salad dressing and mayonnaise, peanut butter, pudding, marshmallows, mousse, cake icing or frosting, toothpaste, pill capsules, jams, photographic film, and more. The global gelatin industry is a massive one. According to Grandview Research, the gelatin market was 3.2 billion U.S. dollars in 2020 and is expected to reach an annual global turnover of 6.7 billion. This high value is due to the many applications for gelatin, from food production to pharmaceuticals and cosmetics. Its versatility and relatively low price make it a popular choice for manufacturers worldwide. How is gelatin made? Gelatin is a combination of the amino acids glycine and proline. Over several hours, it's created by boiling animal parts, including skin, bones, tendons, and cartilage. The collagen is then extracted from these boiled-down animal parts. Once it's all dissolved, the liquid is strained and cooled to form gelatin in the form of noodles, cubes, or sheets. There are generally two types of gelatin. Type A, made with pig skin, pork, or calf bones— Type B, made from cattle hides. However, any animal with a lot of connective tissue can be used. This includes horses, chickens, and fish. In fact, some types of seaweed also contain gelatin. More on that later. Product labels sometimes state the gelatin source, for example, gelatin beef origin. Are animals slaughtered specifically to make gelatin? As we know, gelatin is a protein substance derived from collagen found in animal body parts. Collagen is the most abundant protein in an animal's body, which makes up about 30% of its total protein. Animals that die in an abattoir are slaughtered for meat consumption, so there's no waste for gelatin production. Meat scraps left over from processing gets used for animal feed, so there's an argument to be made that there's no need to slaughter animals specifically for gelatin. Gelatin production perhaps started as a byproduct of the meat industry. But with annual turnovers in the billions of dollars, I'd argue that gelatin is now a co-product of meat and dairy farming, similar to the animal leather industry. Corporations like Nita Gelatin Inc., Jalita AG, and Darling Ingredients Inc. depend on mass-scale animal slaughter to supply collagen protein for gelatin production. It's built into their financial forecasts, and a lack of supply would become a big problem in boardrooms. By purchasing products made with animal gelatin, we're validating the slice of the financial pie chart in the meat industry and perpetuating more animal death and suffering as a result. But by avoiding such products, where does that leave us? Does it mean you'll never enjoy fire-roasted marshmallows ever again? Fortunately, there's a rapid growing selection of cruelty-free, gelatin-derived products on the market. What are the vegan alternatives to gelatin? 
In the past few years, vegan alternatives have been created to mimic the effects of collagen without using animals. These include agar-agar and carrageenan for a thicker consistency, or pectin or guar gum for a thinner one. There are also vegetable gums in powdered forms, such as xanthan gum and locust bean gum. Let's look at each of these gelatin alternatives in a bit more detail so you know exactly what you're buying and supporting. Agar-agar Agar-agar is a gelatinous material derived from certain red algae species. The algae are dried and then ground into a powder. This powder is then boiled in water and the agar-agar is extracted. The agar-agar is then dried into flakes, powder, or bars and can be used as a gelatin substitute. Agar-agar has no taste of its own but absorbs the flavors it's cooked with. Agar-agar contains 80 to 90% fiber, so it's great for regulating the digestive system while not supplying any calories to your diet. It also has a high level of iodine, which is beneficial for thyroid health. Agar-agar is used in products like toothpaste, shampoo, and conditioner. It's a great natural product with many benefits for your health and beauty. Carrageenan, derived from red seaweed, Carrageenan is a thickening agent and stabilizer used in many food products. Carrageenan comes as either a powder or liquid and can be used interchangeably with agar-agar, though it's not quite as strong. Carrageenan is a very versatile ingredient and can be used in many foods, such as ice cream, to give the product a smooth texture without affecting your meal's taste or nutritional value. It's also low in calories, similar to agar-agar, but has a slightly salty taste, which is why it's often used in meat products. As you can see in the photo below of a candy package, carrageenan is used as a stabilizer in the candy, however gelatin is still used as a thickener. Carrageenan is also used in products like toothpaste and moisturizers because it's a natural emulsifier that prevents liquids from separating. This makes it an ideal ingredient for products that need to be stable and consistent. Pectin. Derived from fruit, pectin is an extract that can be used as a vegan gelatin substitute. Pectin has the same consistency as agar-agar, but comes in liquid form rather than powder or flakes. The biggest difference between the two is that agar-agar doesn't have a taste of its own, while pectin has a slightly sweet and sour flavor. Pectin is often used in jams, jellies, and marmalades to help the products set and hold their shape. It's also a good source of fiber and helps regulate digestion. Pectin is found in cosmetics and medicine, and additionally in paper manufacturing as a sizing agent to prevent ink from soaking into the paper fibers. Guar gum. Derived from guar beans, this powder is a common food additive used in many vegan-friendly foods. Guar gum is great for adding volume to baked goods as it can absorb large amounts of liquid without changing the taste or color of your meal. It's also high in fiber, but only absorbs water when heated, so it's not ideal for cold dishes. Guar gum is also found in toothpaste, cosmetics, and medicine due to its ability to thicken liquids without affecting the taste. Oh, and it's used in explosives. The things you learn. Xanthan gum. Derived from the fermentation of Xanthomonas campestris, this powder is used as a thickener and stabilizer in many food products. Xanthan gum is often used in salad dressings, sauces, and ice creams to give them a thicker and creamier texture. It doesn't have a taste of its own, but can be combined with other flavors to create different dishes. Xanthan gum is also used in products like toothpaste and shampoo. It helps to create a stable foam that gives the product a thicker texture. Locust bean gum. Derived from the seeds of the carob tree, locust bean gum is used as an emulsifier and stabilizer in many food products. This powder has no flavor, but can be combined with other ingredients to give different dishes a unique taste. Locust bean gum can be found in toothpaste, lotions, and pharmaceuticals. So, there you have it. Some of the best vegan-friendly gelatin substitutes readily available on the market. With so many options, there's no excuse not to enjoy all your favorite meals without harming any animals in the process. Final Thoughts on Gelatin Gelatin is an animal product found in many food products. Often, it's not listed as the first ingredient, so you may be eating gelatin without even realizing it. The vegan and vegetarian alternatives we shared can help you enjoy your favorite dishes while still being mindful of the environment and animals living on this planet with us. You just listened to What is Gelatin and Why Isn't It Vegan? Explanation and Alternatives by Michael O'Fay at TheMinimalistVegan.com and I'm your host, Marian Erickson. 
And some of you may have heard that carrageenan is something to avoid. So I looked it up on nutritionfacts.org and Dr. Michael Greger has a video about it. And he says, quote, Personally, after having reviewed the available evidence, I continue to view carrageenan the way I view acrylamide, another potential but not proven hazard. Acrylamide is a chemical formed by cooking carbs at high temperatures. So should we avoid eating a lot of these foods like the EPA suggests? Well, food safety concerns must also be considered in the context of dietary consequences. Where is it found the most? Already unhealthy foods. So sure, use your concern about the probable carcinogen acrylamide as just another reason to avoid potato chips and french fries. But until we know more, I wouldn't cut out healthful foods like whole grain bread. Similarly, I'd use potential concerns about carrageenan as an additional motivation to avoid unhealthy foods. But until we know more, I wouldn't cut out more healthful foods. Though I would suggest those with inflammatory bowel disease or other gastrointestinal problems try cutting out carrageenan, at least temporarily, to see if your symptoms improve." Unquote. Please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.